Hey everybody, this is Brent Sinter, Arkansas. Today I'm going to bag some flowers. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a butternut squash. It's a female because it's got the baby on it. And you can tell by the way it looks, this opened this morning and it's either been pollinated or did not get pollinated. Either way, the flower is not receptive to pollen any longer because it's late afternoon. So I showed you this one. You can see how it's kind of bright when it's fully open. It's a brilliant yellow like it was this morning. But here, it's a little bit lighter and yellow colored and it's got a little a point on it you can tell this one has an opening the same with this one right back here this is the ideal one this is the one i'm going to bag right here so the first thing i do you can see the squash is now in here the butternut is i gently slide it over encasing the little baby in the bag here and that's breathable, so it, it won't uh, have any ill effect on it. In fact, if it rains, um, which is something you don't want anyway because that hinders pollination. But anyway, uh, that should protect and keep things out. Now, to make sure it does, pollinators out. To make sure it does, I use these two little clips here. And let me show you what they look like when I put them on. I put my hand up there to block the sun. But if you look at the bottom there, you can see where I've wrapped it over. And essentially I've uh, removed entry points. Now I'm gonna try to take my hand away from here, but the sun may be in the way. Now pollinators not going to try to go up in the bottom here and do this. What they're looking for is a big open flower that they can fly into. So this almost always makes sure there's no pollinators. Now this bad boy here coming up is another type of winter squash I told you about. This is Sibley. This is a bagged male flower, just like I showed you I did with the female butternut. This is a male Sibney, Sibley flower that I will come out tomorrow morning and I'll remove these two little pins here and pull this off and it'll open up. It, it, you know, it might be a little sluggish at first, but what I'll do is I'll make a little pollinator ghost out of it and I'll use it to pollinate the Sibley here, male pollen, to the butternut, which is down there. Here is a beautiful Madison's cross. And I'm going to take the male flower off of this particular plant and I'm going to bag it. Now the pollination I'm after now is called selfing. And selfing means you take the male flower from one plant and you cross it to a female on the same exact plant or, which is what I'm about to do, you take the male flower from the same variety and you cross it on to the female of another same variety. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bag another plant, female squash. Now, this is what Madison's cross looks like. It is a divine yellow straight neck. There is nothing that compares to it. It also has the added benefit of squash vine borers and squash bugs not liking it very much. They go to the other ones. In fact, it's really weird, but uh, butternuts seldom have issues with squash vine borer compared to other types of squash, like ones that have hollow centers like this one. I have cut out several squash vine borer larvae from my butternuts, but I've yet to encounter any with my um, my yellow Madison's cross here. Now I'm going to knock on wood because <laughs> these could be dead in two or three days if you know anything about squash vine borers. They get in and they eat it all. It just kills the plant really fast because you don't know they're there unless you know what to look for. But anyway, that's another story. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous squash and I want to keep this line going however I, what i like to do is i like to take one plant and cross it with another plant and it gives it a bit more diversity 
uh, than doing it to the exact same plan. It kind of keeps it fresher. Um, it doesn't hurt to just do it on the same plant. I've done that many times, but I liked a little bit of change up by crossing it with another plant of the same variety. So I'm going to go to another Madison's Cross now. Now here's the other Madison's Cross, and I've already prepared. I put a flag on it so that I know that this is the plant I'm going to cross with. You see that nice point on there? That means it hadn't opened. Now this variety, Madison's Cross, when it opens the next day, the day before, like today, it's a little bit darker than a lot of others. But you see a bee on there, right there, you see that one? This one opened this morning, and that little bee is still trying to get at it. That's what it looks like once it's opened. And here's a male, the same thing, it was open. See how it's kind of floppy? It's uh, the flowers start to die back. And the bee is still anxiously trying. I mean, these bees are awesome. They are freaking awesome. They're pollinating machines. And I've got a couple different varieties of bees out here that are hitting these. But I want them to keep off of this one because I want to make sure I've got a lot of what's called C. pepo here type squash. It's the species of squash that I have the most of. And I don't want this to cross with a, a Feroche delicide or a... Um, What's another one down there that I've got? Um, Haifa, zucchini, or a delicata. Those are all C. pepos. I don't want one of those. I want the plant I just showed you to cross with this exact squash right here and create a selfed squash. That way I know the seed in this little baby here when it gets grown is going to be this exact variety. And a couple more points here. You can see where I've closed off the entrance here. Um, except for the most aggressive type of pollinator, which I don't think will be a problem at all. But one of the things I do, because the little pins here are a little bit heavy, and these squash flowers can be really delicate. The flower can break off pretty easy, so you have to be really gentle when you do it. And I take sometimes um, one of the clothes pins here and just put it up here to support the flower itself. Now I'll remove those two tomorrow morning. And then I'll remove this one while holding this and gently pull it out until it releases it. When I go to pollinate it with a pollinator ghost, I also have to be really gentle. I can't tell you the number of times I've taken all this trouble to go to stick the male pollen in there and it just break the flower off. If you do that, you're done. Oh, one other thing. Each um, squash that I pollinate or gets fertilized, uh, the pollen goes down into the little bitty, uh, this is called an ovary, it goes down into the baby squash and it starts the seed to growing. Now each squash, most squash give you about a hundred seeds, some do more. The bigger ones like pumpkins and watermelons and all that give you quite a bit more, but for generally for squash I can get about a hundred seed. That's a hundred more plants of Madison's Cross so worth it. I have an opportunity to share with you a couple other things. These two flowers here are males because there's no baby squash on it. They're easy to tell the difference. You see hundreds of videos where they talk about all this stuff all the time. It's crazy. But anyway, these are males. Look at the color of the males. They're pointed. They haven't opened yet. They're still quite uh, firm and viable. And they're light yellow here. I know both of these will open tomorrow. But if you come over here, this one is a little bit smaller and it's greener. It is still growing. This will not open tomorrow. It'll likely be the day after tomorrow or the day after that. I always look for this, this light yellow color. That way I know they'll open tomorrow. You come out in the mornings to do this. It needs to be after the dew is off of everything because moisture messes up pollination as you can see in the grass here it's still quite wet typically i'll come get the mail or i'll get all the I'll pollinate um, between i'd say 8 and 9 30 is pretty good time so i just pull the mail off here and i'll get these little things off here you don't have to be so gentle with the mail because it's already toast like uh, look in there. Just got 
a lot of nice pollen in there. So I'm going to take this over to the, this is the Sibley squash. I'm going to take it over to the butternut and we're going to pollinate that flower. Before I do it, I make what's called a pollination ghost. I did a video on this. And all that does is it allows me to grab it and not toss away the uh, male part of the flower. Also, the stem is a little prickly, not a big deal though. So all I do is I pull back the flowers here. You can rip along the seams and pull it back. And it just, if you wrap it around itself like this, it begins to look like what I call a pollination ghost. This is a Sibley squash. Some of the other squashes are longer. But anyway, now I've got a handle, a nice handle that's really soft that I can use to pollinate the female with. I'm doing this one-handed, so like I said, you gotta be really delicate with the female flower. So I'm gonna take off these uh, clips here, clothes hanger pins, small. And the flower is open, so it's going to be a little bit resistant to being pulled off. Now, as soon as I do this, pollinators are going to try, probably, to come over here. So I'm going to do it quickly, because I can hear them buzzing around everywhere. So you got to be really careful there. So see down in there? All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ghost, and I'm going to rub it around. You can even see all that pollen all over the female stigma there and you got to be careful here because that will actually now I hear a pollinator so I got to put my hand over it and there's a little ant in there but now what I got to do is I don't want other pollinators to bring other pollen on top of this so I'm going to close the flower and I'm going to put a clothes pin over it but I got to use two hands so I'm going to turn the video off so that's cross pollination done. I will come out here uh, tomorrow morning probably and remove this here because there's no way it can be pollinated anymore after actually this afternoon. But um, I'm gonna give it till tomorrow morning and hopefully that squash will begin growing. It probably won't because this is a cross species. Um, cross. <laughs> two different species crossed but um, it may and now for the selfing cross I do the same thing don't have to be as gentle with the male and here's the female I've already removed the pins because I have to be delicate with these I break these off not regularly but sometimes really gently we're gonna let that open up a little bit I'm taking my pollination ghost and I call them ghosts because they kind of look like ghosts and I'm going to off camera here because I have to open these up a little bit well maybe I can find a way to get it in there for you but this is the easy way easiest way I've found is to use a pollination ghost and um, just stick the head down in there like this. It's much easier than getting another tool. Plus if you use another tool like a brush or something like that, you get the pollen on from something you may not want on. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> you see that bee trying to get in there? Right away. They're on it, let me tell you. So I'm gonna finish this and I'm gonna put a pen on it off camera here because the pollinators are coming. And there's Madison's cross self. So now I've covered both cross crossing pollination, two different species, two different uh, plants completely, and the same plant and how you do that and protect them against pollinators. And of course, the last thing you need to do, uh, like these are also self pollinated, is if you cross it, you need to put a tag on it stating what you crossed it with. This tag is the male pollen. Obviously the female is the one we already clamped off. I did take a male off the Sibley squash and pollinate this one. 
and this one is growing. It, it would have fallen off by now. I don't know if the seed in there is going to be viable because a lot of times you can use the pollen from another species and it'll grow, but there'll be just the uh, seed won't be viable in it or there won't be any seed at all. Now the summer squash, Madison's Cross, did cross pollinate it. This is harvest size and I'm not going to harvest it. This plant was obviously selfed and I'm going to save the seed from it. So that's it for this video. That's how I uh, pollinate, cross pollinate, create new uh, types of squash. It's just not that hard at all. It's Brent. We'll see you in the next one. How long do we gotta stay here for people we don't know in one lines? All of the clothes are designed, fast cars, and who knows who? Yeah, I know what they wanna say. They're gonna ask me if I'm gonna make.